March 3rd, 2017. It's Friday. Woo! Made it. <laughs> oh. Been a tough one. Tough week. Tough six years. We're eight days away from the sixth anniversary. I'm going to take next week off and get ready for an all day March 11th. We'll fix that. Good morning, everybody. There's a lot going on today. Great show today. I'm going to load up the boat, take off tomorrow morning. We've got a thousand bucks or something. Theory's going to chew up 160 each way. It's 300 and plus. Not counting whatever. Gas will be 100 bucks to shoot over to the other side. So that leaves us 600 bucks to play with on the ocean for get a couple of days out of that. I already got fuel on the boat and diesel for the stove. We're gonna run out and spend a few days running in the communities and go around with the camera and get some people on camera in a few different ports for three or four days. I'll come back home, edit that down along with all the other stuff for Fukushima's uh, anniversary, the sixth anniversary. This is a big one. This one has to be told in the perspective of unit three to mix oxide fuel. And that explosion was felt 25 miles away. Yeah, 25 miles away. Let me get rid of that music and chat to everybody for a minute. I was supposed to chop that off before I got that part. So we're gonna run back out on the ocean. Anybody's not familiar with that? Let me give you a quick um, introduction to what that actually means. Sometimes so we're going to load up the boat like you see there now. It's loaded up pretty good. 16 jerry cans is around $1,300 worth of fuel, so I won't be doing that. No need of it. I'm not going to be going all over the coastline. We're going to run over to where my hand is right now to this west coast of Vancouver Island. There's a research facility, a bunch of communities, isolated communities. We'll go in there and we'll talk. Hit the wharf with the camera and blah, 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 and equipment. I'm going to print out a bunch of stuff, too, to pass out to people. I'm going to spend three or four days doing that. So by Monday, Tuesday, next week, we'll be back home editing for the show next week. Now, we went out and done the whole coastline already, as you've seen in the depiction. That's what you're looking at. 260 days, 15,000 miles. And let me fix that. Gain that. Oh, we're going to get sunshine today. Brighten up here. That's why that happened. And so instead of Mother Nature, we ended up, like, so over there is the official numbers pre Fukushima. You would see that diversity and that incredible, unbelievable. These are the pictures I took behind me. And so I went and done that whole coastline. We had a crew of four people originally, but it was too expensive. Like almost a thousand bucks a day with all the traveling and a couple of vehicles, motorhome. Like it was just, it was unbelievable. And, but anyway, we got the documentation. So that was all that mattered. And all that documentation is up at the nuclearproctologist.org. We're heading back out to get some, and going to the communities this time, more so than, we will be on the ocean each day, but we'll be in the communities too, dragging the whole operation around with us. <laughs> it's going to be, like I'm not planning on doing the whole coast. I'm just going to come over and do all these communities in a 150 mile zone or something. Like there's five or six communities do one a day for four or five days and get in there for an hour or two hours and poke that camera in the right places, get in the fisheries and oceans and get their take on it. Get down and see if I can get kicked out of a few fish plants, blah, 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 blah. 
Because we are at battle, and we will go to battle, and you will hear our battle cry, I can assure you. We will not be denied. We will not be put to the one side. We are, we are what you can now refer to as New World Order, the righteous and uh, the driven to have a future for your loved ones. We're driven to do it for ourselves. It has to be done. These people will take it all away from us. They are in 10. Look at a fuss created over two buildings. Think about it. Wrap your mind around it. You're talking about the death of the Pacific Ocean. What I showed you in those pictures before was the species are missing permanently because of four buildings. How is that possible? Well, this one alone is two million times worse than any current reactor on the planet. It's known as MOX fuel. It's reactor number three. It's mixed oxide fuel. If they lose power to those, uh, the, to that reactor or to any other reactors uh, past a few hours from now, uh, you might reach a three-mile three mile island. But how are you going to get power back to something so destroyed? You can't and the reactor core was popped out of the building. There was all, all the warnings are dear, but they hid it from you. He reported on it, but the media didn't act on that. This is unit three. Now I know it's hard to conceive that your media might lie to you or misrepresent something, but I can assure you that is exactly what we're talking about. And we're talking about it on a scale that is staggering. But this in particular, these buildings are completely destroyed and they're not like anything else on this planet. They have lied for 70 years. Hot particles in the Pacific Northwest and americium Neptunium, we'll get to that. So reactor three is right behind me. Does that look destroyed you and am i crazy for saying it's destroyed building like seriously i've been told i am crazy for saying that that is damaged i've been told i'm a scam artist for trying to convince people that that is damaged and that is like a banana and it's harmless. So why am I worried? Then why are they worried if that is so? And wouldn't it be more appropriate for academics to come out instead of non-academics and just people who apologize and, and the same handful of people over and over? We're going to cover a whole lot coming up. And just to remind everybody, if you're going to donate, donate soon because... Everything I do is calculated upon how much money I can raise in the next couple of days if I'm going to go any f into different reaches of that island over there, right? In order to do that, it takes four to five to six days for the money to show up in my account, but I can go ahead and make plans if it's showed up and I can transfer it and those is going to show up. you find the links below. It's not necessary. Don't worry about it. Let's keep going with the show. I'm just saying to anybody that might donate in the next couple of days where I'm gone, over half the fuel melted at number two and three out, says Tepco. And they assumed the worst case scenario. And I like my green screen is doing today. It's assuming the worst case scenario. Nuclear radiation, most carcinogenic thing. Let's make it sound cheery. It's the most carcinogenic thing. It's so cool. Really trendy. You get all the kinds of liver and lung and respiratory disease. This is so awesome. You get Alzheimer's, dementia. Come on, you always wanted a little Alzheimer's, dementia. Tell the truth. Come on. Tell the truth. You want it. Just like everybody else is going to. It's trendy. It's cool. Get your diabetes now. Be the new kid on the block. I got to go to the extreme. Have I ate today? Myself more late, will that help? <laughs> oh God, what a mess. Here we go. I got too much. Let's move. The smoke is black. 
murmured the prime minister. <laughs> and number three went ka bada 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 boom 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 boom. It went so boom boom boom. I'll get rid of that. So like I know it's kind of a reach, but I'm gonna go with what you're looking at is a boom. It truly was a boom and that picture actually might be real, so that's why we're doing it. Now, I know nobody died, but there's 5,000 people that will. That's just went in there. These were homeless. These weren't, these weren't uh, nuclear plant workers. <laughs> you don't believe that one, do you? Hang on. I'll explain that to you in a second. Because they steal homeless people all the time and drag them in there. That's what they do for a living around nuclear power plants. They go out on the streets and kidnap people. And video clip, Dana, if you don't mind. To push the burning fuel. Now, this is Sellafield. You'll catch up in a second. But they went out to the theaters and stole people out of theaters instead of the plant workers. Uh into the back of the reactor. But the heat had melted the cartridges, so they'd become stuck inside the core. They were forced to use scaffolding poles they'd found nearby to try and push the cartridges out. Radiation was so intense they could only work a few hours. They were running out of firefighters. The police uh, from the factory had turned up looking for volunteers. Uh, and they brought a bus and they decided the best way to get the volunteers was to go to the cinema and uh, and volunteer the back two rows uh, at, the, uh, at the show to go into the factory to, uh, as it turned out, to uh, help push the fuel rods out of the, uh, out of the reactor. So they went in to a theater and kidnapped people because the nuclear plant workers wouldn't go in and do his job. That was their job, right? But hey, you know, these 5,000 weren't the people they would have sent in. They, they went out and kidnapped these off the street. The old TEPCO video. And Tokyo Electric had gone into the Unit 3 fuel pool just once. You remember that Unit 3 is the, um, is the reactor that's blown to smithereens. Um, the video showed a lot of damage but ian goddard was able to find one spot that there's clearly something that appears to be discernible and what the hell is ernie gunnerson talking about ian goddard is not an academic or a scientist or anything else he's a known public relation firm despicable one on that highly unusual that he immediately Nuclear scientists would align himself with a person like that rather than other academics. Now, Ernie is telling you the fuel pull up in the top left hand corner and the depiction over there is in the building behind me. They're talking about number three. Ernie used to make the assemblies for it. So, anybody that quotes Ernie and they're educated and articulate or a doctor or something like that. Uh, they're not who you think they are. And Ernie's definitely not who you think he is. He's the guy who sent people into Three Mile Island for three minutes. And then he never went on a nuclear site again because they died within a year or two. Melted fuel from, if not right away, melted fuel was a 90% meltdown at Three Mile Island. There's all kinds of studies out there on how much was released if you actually go look for it. Melted fuel from the reactor three is a highly lethal mixed uranium plutonium oxide. What that means is inside of this baby was missiles and, and weapons material. So they took missiles and weapons that they made, say, 50 years ago and he decommissioned what they done was they reclaimed the fission product which is all you're going to find in these things which is uranium plutonium and tritium tritium is actually a fission product 
That's why they use it the way they use it, right? And for weapons. Like, this is a big freaking lie. Oh, it's harmless. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because you can't contain it. But, so what they do is they reclaim uranium, the americium, neptunians, the half particles if they're there. And they, they manifest because this stuff went through a chain reaction. It's two million times worse than what it was originally. Now they're going to take that and put it in a reactor and burn it again. Now it becomes two million times worse than the two million times worse it already was because it was weaponized than it was originally when they got it and uh, condensed it down from 400 train cars of iron ore to a gram of fission product using the weapons, right? A gram in the weapon is roughly 400 train cars of iron ore, right? <laughs> Clean chain. Clean, green, too cheap to meter stuff. You get what I'm saying? So they reclaimed that. Now it was 2 million times worse than it was before. So it was 2 billion times worse. It's 2 million times worse than the current reactor. They're already 2 million times worse when they're running. Yeah, it gets confusing. Now, curium is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods. Now, there was a... They were trying to open this facility. Here, I'll fix that. Sorry. My apologies. Let's find this next one. And we'll do that after. Now, I'm going to play another video clip. And this is a minute long. And it's about a scandal where they seeded the audience in the email in the comments section with employees from nuclear power plants. Now, that is literally the trolls you will find all over the internet are these same types of people or what you're going to be told about by this person. That's why I'm doing it for you. It's from the government's nuclear agency to intervene in a government-sponsored symposium in 2007. In a report submitted to the government on Friday, Chuby Electric says the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency requested that it gather participants and have them ask pre-arranged questions at the forum. The utility says it refused NISA's request, but it admits the senior officials of its only nuclear power plant sent emails to employees and visited affiliated companies in an effort to comply with the request. A Chubi Electric official said on Friday the firm sent several people to the forum. He apologized, saying this could have led to the misunderstanding that the firm was trying to manipulate public opinion. The revelation comes weeks after a scandal that involved Kyushu Electric Power Company. The firm came under fire for asking employees to post emails in support of the restart of idled nuclear reactors at a government-sponsored meeting for local residents in June. Following the scandal, the industry ministry ordered all nuclear power plant operators to report any activities aimed at winning local support for nuclear power. NISA them. says it doesn't have enough facts to comment on the issue at this point. Its spokesman said he did attend the forum but doesn't remember issue. Right, and he had that weird look on his face when he was... They, gave, they done it on purpose, most likely showed a clip of with him giggling and like kind of looking disrespectful because what what he done was disrespectful there's a few chuckles <laughs> getting a little bit better with the graphics but like when you look at these pictures of these reactors like, you would assume, anyway, Gordon is, it got hit by a meteorite or something like that. I sniffed that off, did I? Let's try that again. You assume it got hit by a meteorite. That's what I get for being cocky, saying I'm getting pretty good. <laughs> Just my own fault, I deserved that meteorite strike in the wrong place. Just saying. Let's keep going. We're getting through. It's really good. We're moving. Good. Good morning, everybody. You got to get up and plug you guys in. That's what we're... I'll jump up and do it right now.
ain't going weird all I need here this morning. Good morning, everybody. How is everybody? Good morning. Ooh. Good morning, everybody. Neil, Ivory, Elaine, which is Shanikin in the blue? Mouse. And see, this is what I was talking about, Elaine. If you scroll up, now you can click on somebody and go to their channel. That way. I figured it was quicker to come in and show you than just in case you, you weren't aware of that. I'm sure you probably were, but let's keep going. Good morning, everybody. M. Thirst, Ellie, uh, Shadow. Yeah, they suffer or organ melt down, just like the reactors are melting down. That's right, uh, because of the x-rays, neutrons, and gamma shine, for anybody who's not familiar. Cats alive, Joe, good morning, everybody. Liz, CJ, just come in and say quick hi. Ellie, hi, everybody. Time lapse. Anybody I didn't get? My apologies. I'm really good at missing people, unfortunately. Steven, Jace. I'm your author, Radical Home Goddess. She's got a book out there, folks. Please support her. Please buy that book. Please encourage her to do it again and again. And people will make mistakes, and you know that's true. And so support those that are trying. Let them make those mistakes. Give them that ability to make those mistakes and learn like you've done for me. Hi, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Mike. <laughs> Don't be a shithead, Mike, and I won't come back and haunt ya. Hi, Illusion. Hi, Vaughn. Robert. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Spiral. Charlie. Yeah. Thank you. Your prayers are working radical, for sure. I'm feeling good. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going, everybody. Burn through it. Dana, get with the program. Alrighty, here we go. So, Unit 3, what you're looking at right now, a oh, boomer. Yeah. And so, the melt of fuel was the highly lethal mix. And this is where we. Now, that's uh, pretty staggering when you look at this, yes? And. Hang on, here we go. I want to be able to zoom in on it. So this was 190 foot high, um, 150 feet wide. No, seriously, that's what it was. I'm not lying to you. Here's Helen Calicott. Now she's an activist 30 years, 40 years or something. She's out there telling everybody a lie and she won't stop it. And so I'm forced to come out and try to counter that lie um and especially building three is very fragile it's still got a huge cooling pool on its roof protected by nothing the molten core has melted its way down onto the concrete of the containment vessel but maybe into the earth and if that collapsed there would be a nuclear inferno and so there's no fuel there and there's no pole there it's gone so there was a nuclear inferno there it is right there we have it documented, and I just wish she would stop telling people that lie that there's fuel pool in the building when it's patently absurd. And it's disrespectful to the other 8 million species that are struggling for her voice. If she's not going to do it, then who? If you're not going to do it, then who? Reactor number three with MOX exploded on the 14th, by the way. And... The Krypton 85 switches to cesium 134 or 137, surely. And then that has a 300 year life before it basically switches off. Excuse me. So the building um, is truly destroyed. And these are models of the plumes coming to North America right away. There's a lot of them models. We'll touch on some of them later. Uh, I got them in the lineup so I don't miss anything this morning because it's the last show for a week. And it's so important that I tell this particular story because this reactor 
is the animosity equivalent of two million reactors. Let's scale it back and see if I can... Just having a toughy time. I'll get it next time, maybe. I don't know why. Some days are like that. Let's keep moving. Because if I get distracted, we won't get through it. And so, I'm going to go with the, the take on it that the Billings lost through fuel pool because I have a lot of supporting evidence. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like go with her or Gunnarsson's versions. I'm going to stick with the version that it's missing and that therefore the plumes, the models that I'm showing you from Billings that I, I think these are the real pictures. All of these are the real pictures. I don't believe um, that they're being honest in Japan and that these are the real pictures that you got to realize how big the buildings were, like 190 feet high versus, like the one behind me is 130 foot. And so it's pretty easy to see what's going on here. Okay. Now, just touch on that one more time. Uh, you were getting around 360 buckyballs. These are sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs. I gotta find that story and I'll bring it up on the screen for you. The computer lights up for me. Uh, five years. Hang on. There's a story out there about organ problems for people in North America. Bell problem. Bell cancers is at skyrocketing. Well, you get about 360 Ds for the males into the bowels each day, sequestered. And so, there was a lot more than that in your body if you had that much in your bowel system. I can't find it for some reason. Let's keep going because I'll run out of... we got a lot to get through. Now, MIT, when Fukushima happened, came out... 123. Okay. Now, they're going to talk about... Uh, the radiation models on humans, and humans' exposure. This is MIT. It's a very short clip. And I'm going to turn that down a little bit. My apologies. And this is so important. But what I'm going to show you is uh, the studies from just one academic. He'd done it for 35 years on big old dogs and big old puppies. He fed them americium, neptunium. <laughs> Turning into a ghost today for some reason. Toxicity of inhaled plutonium dioxide and beagles. What they'd done was they took 144 dogs and they inhaled one of two sizes. Not every day, all day, not in their food and not in their water, but just one single application. And within five years, if you start at the third sentence from the top, tumors of the lungs, the skeleton and the liver occurred beginning about three years. I'll read that sentence again. Tumors of the lung, skeleton, and liver occurred beginning at about three years after exposure. One more time. Tumors of the lung, skeleton, and liver, blah, blah, blah. So bone tumors found in 93 dogs. Let's start that sentence again. Bone tumors found in 93 dogs three years after. Five years all together, basically, were the most common cause of death within five years. And there's all kinds of studies, and curium uh, had the same uh, properties when it comes to animals. Now, if you look at the last sentence of the study on 144 dogs, these findings in dogs suggest similar dose-related biological effects could be expected in humans accidentally exposed and so MIT Possibly on the phone, although I don't see a phone, uh, 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 Jackie Yanch, who's in Spain. Jackie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> until last year, Jackie was a professor uh, in the Department of Nuclear Science and Engineering. She continues to be affiliated with us, and she's a specialist on radiation health effects. I'm here. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get the question. Uh, the question had to do with what are the prospects for long-term contamination in the area around the reactor? I think that was the question. 
in terms of the amount of release or the consequences of of a release. I mean, there's been very little that seems to have been uh, released and dispersed uh, beyond the containment. Now, unfortunately, we have very little data, almost no data about how much radiation we can live with at, at, in terms of elevated background levels. All of our data come about the health effects of radiation come from a situation which all the doses delivered in uh, less than a minute. So all MIT, just after Fukushima, telling you all the doses are based upon a minute, but they could have easily went and found Dr. Raymond Gilmetti's studies. And so could any journalists. If I could do it, I'm pretty sure they could do it. I don't know, it's a shot in the dark, but I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure they could have found stuff like that. Because if you remember correctly, they dragged him out for Fukushima. And he said he couldn't make it here. He said the jet streams like Christopher Busby had said weren't real. Let's keep moving. And so that's a really interesting part of it. Now, the next parts coming up are pretty interesting. Now, they're hiding the Fukushima 50 who are in suits just like them. There's no reason to hide them because you don't know who, which one is which, right? All you had to do was put in a bunch of homeless with the Fukushima 50. Nobody knew what was what. This is what they're doing. They're hiding the Fukushima 50 in a media campaign. But there was no reason to hide them, was there? Because they're in the same suits. How does the tarp make it easier to identify somebody when you can't see any part of their body anyway? Well, that was the game, right? So it was homeless, right? They didn't want you to see them crying and shaking. To push the burning fuel through uh, into... So you remember that clip I played a few minutes ago? This is the clip, anybody just joining us. Where in UK at Sellafield, they stole people from the theater. They didn't use the employees, right? Let's keep moving. That's reactor three. See, I kind of think that that's destroyed, or at least, you know, I think it needs more in a paint job. And therefore, these models uh, are valid. Well, they're valid because if you look at it, it's all the way across the Pacific. It's all the way across North America. Now, it's all the way across the Atlantic and the European countries. So it continuously, even if it stopped, but it didn't stop coming out. It's not like it was just a single plume. Right there. What you see venting out of there is extraordinary. Just what you see there. Can you see the smoke? What looks like smoke? Right, so you can see all the haze right there in that jumble. But right above it, see that smoke going straight up? Now, that could be spread far and wide, come all the way to North America, and then it falls like snow. You can't see it or smell it or taste it or hear it, and it'll look like this here. These are models, but they're not actually based upon the inventories, particularly from this one, which is Unit 3, which is what we're talking about today friday it's another depiction of the reactors uh, buildings you can see the smoke in unit three up there in wafering yes and <clears throat> the initial explosion is going to be huge so the numbers after the initial explosion are not going to be nowhere n near what the initial explosion was because the initial explosion was the inventories once they melted down, the fact that it continued for another day was frightening. The reason being was Chernobyl lasted allegedly 10 days, but it was equal to 400 Hiroshima-type bombs worth of radiation. Now, the Hiroshima bomb picked up a million tons of dirt and atomized and aerosol, the buildings and people, and that came in contact with fissionable products. It was equal to 400 of them over 10 days. So it's equal to 40 of them a day. So when these buildings are smothering, each of them, on the Chernobyl scale, are going to be equal to 40 nuclear bombs a day. But there was five or six reactors up high in the building, in the spent fuel pools that don't exist anymore. It would have been there for 10 or 20 years. They are the reactor cores. Let's burn through the rest of it. So... Workers uh, around the building cleaning a rail. 
around this. This was homeless and destitute. This is not Harvard or Yale or Berkeley or Stanford. These are the, the most vulnerable of society. And that's why we are here is because a military unit severely contaminated when number three exploded. They sent in a military suicide squad to, to try to save Japan. They were on, these are heralds in every sense of the word. They hadn't, they weren't told the truth. They were kind of told the truth, but they were, they were volunteers. They knew they would not survive and they would die shortly after. And everybody that goes near this dies shortly after, within a couple of years, most. It's a miserable, uh, unbelievable, horrible death. And most of them are homeless and they're kicked loose, they're sick, and they're left to go die in a park somewhere. They're left to go die on a stairway or a sidewalk. It's just, how can we do that? Why are we doing that when there's no need to do that? We have hospitals, we have doctors. Why why do we take that road? Why do we take the low road instead of the high road and band together as a planet and come up with real ways? We would have solved it by now if the planet had to went to work on it. But now look what they got done to us. They killed the Pacific Ocean. It's leaving Japan. It never stops coming out. It never stops coming out. Day after day, even in these models, week after week, it never stops coming out. It's always coming out. It, never, it might stop a little blurp, blurp, but that was the detonation of another reactor and it'll turn a different color. It covered all of North America, all the Pacific Ocean. And so no matter where it rained, it covered everything in radiation. That was game over. Because we're talking about really scary stuff. We're talking about an industry so far out of control that for the last 70 years, their whole existence is predicated upon you thinking that you're too stupid to understand the very basic. And so they come out and lied to you and told you it was an innocuous and benign and like potato chips or walking in sunshine or getting on an airplane. And it's not. It's never be. They, it's all, you know... People like Lindsey Graham are involved. You know, you know this is really bad stuff. Look at the damage to this place. We're almost through it. Look at the damage inside. There's no connecting power to a building that don't exist. These are the cast. They got washed out to sea and some left behind. The buildings popped them all the way out to sea. A boom. This is worse than Chernobyl uh, by a million. It's different fuel. They didn't have reactor cores in pools above reactor in Chernobyl because they're not idiots. Russians are much too smart to do stupidest, moronic stuff like that. The hydrogen explosion does not produce such a black smoke. The hydrogen is the noble gases building up inside the containment. It just needs oxygen and it'll detonate. That's the issue when they bury it underground. It just needs oxygen to find its way in there or something else and it can detonate. Plutonium uranium reactor 3 had all been blown out. And why would you argue with that? It had all been blown out. The reactor cores, the fuel pools. But yet, this is the world we live in where they claim, unless you dig up the stuff I got, and God asked Journal, why does he exist? Who is this person? He got nothing to do with nuclear. Why did Ernie Gunnarsson align himself with that instead of an academic or a university or an institution? Why would he go to the lowest form of life? This guy was a stalker, got arrested for stalking a celebrity, actually. This is inside the building. This is... Um, that's one of the casts over there, but the electric electronics are right here in that same area. That's one of the Fukushima 50. He would have died shortly after. It was a nuclear explosion, number three. And look at the damage. Look at the water. There's no plug and power back in. Even though that's unit four there. That's unit four. 
Now, that is supposed to be up high in the building. As you can see, it's not bolted on or nothing. It landed there. That's the top of the reactor core, and it should be about 60 feet above it and straight up the center, not over on the side. Unit 3 exploded a second time 24 hours later, and the wind and the rain brought high levels, and that was the end of Tokyo and Sendai and Nagano. That was the end of them. These are extraordinary pictures, trust me. These people were getting pounded with x-rays and gamma shine, neutron burst. Just unbelievable. It was a nuclear explosion, number three, and the fuel rods were blown out of the pool. Now, have a look at it. Do you think that that headline is correct? Therefore, Ernie Gunnarsson was lying, Helen Callercott, and your media is lying to you. And, and it's shocking. It's horrible. It's horrific. It's terrible. But we got to call a lawyer a lawyer. We can't put him on a pedestal after lies like this. Can we? Should we? Is that how we should do things? Put him on a pedestal because they're special? There are kings and queens or something. Not that I have any, but in that context... We're all our own kings and our own queens, whether we want to appreciate that. Well, similar to Chernobyl, except it had reactor cores on the roof that don't exist anymore. It's burned through the rest of it. And 50%, number four was 100% release and 50% at number three. Well, that's number four. That was 100%, by the way. And so was uh, reactor three. That was 100%, right? Both of them. And did number four catch fire that day? Hell yeah. And so when we, when I talk about these buildings, I'm very familiar with these buildings. I, we covered this over and over and over. We drew up the depictions, put together the depictions just so you can wrap your mind around it too. The red bundles up above me are the fuel pool and storage pool for 10, 20 years of reactor cores, which is right behind me straight up the center. And so they're missing from these depictions, these buildings, right? Complete destroyed reactor four. And this is reactor three. These buildings were 190 feet high. I'll turn that down. I'm sorry. I know. Sometimes I don't, I don't even hear it sometimes. There we go. I'll turn that down a little bit. We only got a little bit to get through. And so you can see the enormity of the damage. You can see it's not 190 foot high anymore. And this is what the buildings would normally look like. 190 feet high and 150 feet wide. And the big fuss is because these people are out here lying to us, trying to manipulate you and deceive you and trick you into thinking I'm the bad person when I'm the only person um, that will show you all this, period. I really am, I'm it. I'm sorry I'm not perfect. I really am. I'm sorry I'm not wealthy and I'm not liked by all the media and that I don't have all kinds of books and all kinds of academic accolades to throw at you and impress you. Um, but I don't work that way. All of these isotopes are the hot particles. And this is what we're talking about. Today was reactor three. What you see there is, I created this as a mockery because it can't be done. These are all me just suited up. These are the extremes I go through in trying to articulate this story. It really is. And that the models I'm showing you are based upon real stuff. These are not didn't Norwegian Institute for Air Research. These are easy to verify. All of these models, the, the plume never stops coming out, except for that one. But that's because the model stopped after a few days. But the reactors, if you use the real models, right, you will find out that what I say is true. And <clears throat> just remember, you know, we are the last expedition to ever go out and do the coastline. The information is free for everybody to make documentaries with. It's up at my website, thenuclearproctologist.org. 
I'm going to head back out on that little boat tomorrow morning. I'll be on the water tomorrow afternoon somewhere over there. On Vancouver Island, right by my elbow on the west coast. And there's a whole bunch of fjords and big, you know, 50, 60 mile inlets um, where whales and porpoise and seals and sea lions would normally hang out in massive populations of creatures. Looks good. And I have the luxury of hopefully being able to pull up and move somewhere else each day for four or five days and interview people in these communities. And because we've raised almost a thousand gathered up, I was going to keep raising it and get some more equipment, but we need to get out there. It's the anniversary. We need to be heard. We need to be felt. And we need to do whatever we can do to wake up this planet. And I need to go out and interview people this anniversary. I'm, I don't know. I just feel compelled to go do it. I really do. And so I'm going. I got enough to pull it off. I hope that people will be able to help me and support me. You'll find links below. Yeah, I agree. Humans might have less than 10 years. Uh, 27, 26. I do. Yeah. Thanks for everybody. Let's shut her down, I guess. Um, there we go. Well, hugs for everybody. We made it through another stream. How did we do it? We don't know. It's been such a long haul. We're the last expedition to go on the ocean. We're going to head back out. We're almost in the spring. It's a good time to get out there and get a few days in. The anniversary's coming. Drag that boat through a whole bunch of communities. Get people talking along the coastline. Get a movement started. It's now or never. It's now's the time. We're all in. We've been at this for many years. We're veterans. We're the champs. We're the winners. No matter what, God's light will shine on us forever. We done the moral and ethical thing. We made the stand. We didn't go along for the ride. We went and went to war for this planet because it deserves more. It deserves to be fought for. Our legacy won't be we lived down and let evil wander our, into our world. Our legacy will be we, we stood tall. We got it all. We challenged it on every step of the way. We made that road the longest road that evil had ever tried to wander. It regretted it at every step of the way. And we are righteous, period. And there will be no stopping us when we make our last stand. That day is coming. Out for everybody. We'll see everybody on March 11th for an all day or looking forward. You'll find links below for everything we were talking about. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.